Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I wanted to hop on really quick. I've already filmed the unboxing, the swatching, the painting of this tutorial, which is on this this uh, video. If you watch this, you can paint this along with me real time with whatever pastels you have. Uh, but I'm gonna be reviewing these Paul Rubens oil pastels today. And um, the reason that I'm coming back in here after I've done the review is because I actually did reach out to the company. I was concerned because there was no labeling on the box whatsoever. There was no, nothing but the Paul Rubens logo on the box. And, um, and I'll just show you here because I have one of the boxes right here that's empty except for the little tubes they come in. There's no labeling on this whatsoever other than their logo. It's a beautiful box. But what concerned me about this is that um, PY35 is used in a lot of these pastels. P, um, PR108 is used in a couple of these pastels. And PR108 is cadmium, uh, cadmium red. PY35 is cadmium yellow. There's PO20 on, um, that's a cadmium yellow, PY35. There's, let's use this one, PO20, PO73, that's fine. Um, PO20, PY35, so cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. There's several colors that use cadmium in them. And I just wanted to mention that in case you want to avoid cadmium in your studio. So I reached out to the rep and I said, there's no cautionary labeling on this. I don't see an ASTM labeling on any of these. The only thing I see on me is these are the, on the sticks themselves, the pigment numbers. It doesn't even say the word cadmium and the, the CE certification, which I believe is a European safety standard um, thing, but nothing informing the consumer about the cadmium on the packaging or on um, on the sales page and on the Amazon sales page, it says this product uses safe, environmentally friendly materials. And if I read safe, environmentally friendly materials, I wouldn't think cadmium. I would think it would be free of heavy metals and things like that. Now they do show, if you look at the Amazon listing and you scroll down, they do show swatches and the swatches have pigment numbers on it. But if you don't know that PY35 and PR108 and PO20 are cadmium colors, you wouldn't know that. So I just wanted to make sure that if you're considering purchasing this and you learn about it from me that you know right off the bat that there's cadmium in these pastels and you can choose whether or not you want them in your studio. Cadmium in my art products does not bother me, but I'm not going to take these to a class at the library where kids are going to be creating and let them use that. If I didn't know, if I just thought these are environmentally friendly, non-toxic sticks, I didn't know what the pigments codes meant, I might bring them to the library and let kids use them. And so I just wanted to inform anybody that wishes to avoid heavy metals that may be working with children to maybe consider a different set of pastels. Um, so when I reached out to the, the rep, they told me, rest assured the products meet the SDS comma EN-71-3 and ASTM D4236 and the requirements of the uh, sales platform, which is Amazon. So um, that's what they that's what the rep told me. And they said that it's the same formulation as the smaller Haya pastels. So you still have the brochures from them. All that information is going to be the same. In the brochures, there are color numbers and color names, but not the pigment information. I didn't have the brochure or the boxes from the small ones because I put them in my drawer storage. Um, but I did pull out a couple of the pastels and they do have pigment numbers on all of the, the smaller Haya pastels. So like this is the cadmium yellow, this is the cadmium red. But again, you've got to know the pigment codes to know what's in them. Um, my friend Angela actually took photos of her bo of the box of the bigger Haya sets with the smaller pastels in it so I could see the colors, but again, not the pigment information except on the sticks themselves. So basically, I just want to put this out there so that you know where you can find the pigment information. Unfortunately, you'd have to buy the smaller sticks to have the pigment information for these, but the bigger ones do list it on Amazon. Um, that said, I enjoyed the products. I think they performed really well, but I think this is going to open up um, me wanting to research what needs to be on a paint label if it's sold in the United States. And I think we need to maybe have a discussion on another video about um, paint labeling toxicity and keeping ourselves safe in the studio and uh, what the obligations are from companies to inform their their users of what's in their products and is is it enough just to put it on the tube or on the stick if you can't examine those things because you're shopping online anyway that's a discussion for another day just want to let you know there is cadmium in several of the sticks in both of the sets of these jumbo pastels in case you want to know that and i didn't want to tack it on the end of the video because i know not everybody watches to the end and i did if you're gonna potentially 
buy this because you watched my video. I want you to know right up front what you're getting into and to make sure that you're okay with it. Um, you may wish to wear gloves. Um, you may wish to use tools to blend the pastels. You may want to avoid them altogether. I think they're a good quality product, but I believe in consumer advocacy and consumer knowing what they're buying. So with that, I hope you paint this along with me. It was a lot of fun. And let's get to the unboxing, swatching, and tutorial. We'll see you there. Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to take a look at the brand new product from Paul Rubens. It is an oil paint stick or a jumbo oil pastel. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out exactly what it is. Um, so these have these are new, but the colors are new. You might remember a couple of years ago, I got these um, jumbo oil paint sticks from Paul Rubens. They're basically large oil pastels. They're Haya oil pastels, but large. And um, I thought they were nice for when you want those, when you need a large amount of a color. And I was hoping they would come out with more colors, kind of like the Sennelier Jumbo Oil Pastels, and they have. And so they're all in these, and I'm just opening these up for the first time here. They're all in these little plastic tubes. I assume to keep them from, um, from smearing. I don't know if I have to store them in here, because honestly, let me tell you, I if I have to keep something in a little container like this, I am probably unlikely to use it if I have to constantly be taking them out of these containers. Um, this is a really nice box that they're in, and there's two colorways. So let me just, oh, you know what? They're all falling out of this anyway. Okay, let's just take these out. Let's take, let's take them out of them. I'm not gonna use them if they're stuck in there. We've got the, um, yep, yeah, these feel like a pastel more as opposed to an oil paint stick just because how soft they are. On the wrapper, we've got pigment information. Like for instance, this has three light fastness stars and it's a combination of PR170 and PR101. So I think that's like a um, perylene maroon and a, an iron oxide red. Um, it's called Ruby Red and oh yeah look at that easy to peel off little um, segments of the wrapper and I don't think that's not how it was before this is an improvement this is definitely an improvement all right so let's uh let's open these up let's open these up I'm not gonna try to keep the package pristine because that's just not gonna happen I might try to make something to store them in with these like maybe cut these down halfway and put them in the box and then that way they can be you set them in upright but um but they won't all be kind of falling over or smushing together this one is po20 py35 and pw6 okay py35 is a cadmium yellow pw6 is white and po20 is an orange i said Cadmium orange? What's let's see what this color's called. Uh bright yellow. Alright, so you know that kind of that gives me a little bit of pause of PY35 because that's a cadmium color and you're gonna be holding this pastel with your fingers. You're probably gonna be smearing it with your fingers, so that's something to be aware of. Let's see what this one looks like. This one is PR83 and PY13, and it is called Chinese Orange. I'm not I'm taking these at random. Do you want to see how those go in there like that? I guess I don't know. Uh this is PW6 and NR and it's called coral. Um it doesn't say what obviously there's another color in here, but that's all it says is just PW6. The NR could be with a could do with a red or pink pigment that's not light fast rated. I'm not sure, but that's strange, so <laughs> as uh, as a viewer once said, it wouldn't be Paul Rubens without some pigment uh, typos. This one's PW6 and PV23, so a dioxazine violet. It's called Parma Violet. So there's two sets of these, and I think they're supposed to be the most popular colors. That's why they're offered in the large things. And as I know yet, I don't think these are open stock unless they're on like AliExpress open stock. Generally, you don't find things on Amazon open stock because the price that they have to charge to provide an open stock product on Amazon is just, you might as well go to look and buy the Sennelier Jumbo Pastel at that point, you know what I mean? It just doesn't make financial sense for a consumer or for the company because the fees are so high. This one is cobalt blue and it's a mixture of ultramarine blue and white, so not a true cobalt, which is kind of funny. They'd have an actual cadmium 
pigment in one and not a cobalt pig pigment in the other and not call it cadmium yellow deep or something like that you think they'd make they'd make uh they'd make use of that um this is indian blue which is a mix of ultramarine blue pb29 pw6 which is just a titanium white and pb15 colon 3 which is a phthalo blue so interesting mix there oh this is going to fit a lot of these pastels if i keep the box open like that i like that uh, let's see this one i like how they're packaged these are really sturdy little vials they would actually be nice for bead storage if you if i don't end up using these for pastel storage I wonder if I could use these to actually mold a pastel because I have a bunch of pastels um, that are double like duplicate boxes that were sent to me because they were like an overstock and I thought and I've given most of them I, well I've given a lot of them away but I was thinking I could make my own custom colors using them as a base and adding other colors to them too. Uh, so this is PY4 and PG7 permanent green light just basically a um, phthalo blue plus white. The pigments sound good in most of these, to be honest. These are rubbery. These little stoppers here, they're not like the hard plastic that you usually, usually get with these sorts of things. So definitely worth keeping for something. I'm surprised at how nice those, those little things are definitely worth keeping. And plus, because they had the sponges on there, the, uh, the tubes themselves really aren't gross. All right, so this is um pg36 and pw4 uh, P oh my gosh pg36 which is thalo green yellow shade py3 which is hansi yellow and pw4 which is a like a zinc white a more transparent white and this is called pine green pw6 is your more opaque white your titanium white pw4 is more of transparent uh white Tran more translucent, obviously not transparent. Now this is raw sienna, PY42, PR101, and PBK11. Now I'd expect the PY42, I'm, I'm surprised on the other two, it's probably gonna be similar to a yellow ochre as well. Often raw sienna is a PBR7, um, but still has that that look of the yellow ochre kind of color, just a little more transparent. Um, these are good colors though, I have to say. You know, I think actually, you know what? Some of these ends are not the rubbery ones. Some of these are hard. This is a hard plastic one. The other ones have been rubbery. This is kind of like the ends on the old style ones, and I think I might need a tool to get that open. She does not want to release. I think if you're going to store them, storing them in these containers makes a lot of sense, but if you're going to use them, keeping them in the containers doesn't make much sense. All right, this is PY35 called gold yellow. PY35 is cadmium yellow, so I'm surprised they didn't just call it cadmium yellow, especially because it can give somebody like the, hey, this is cadmium color, handle with care, you know? Um, moss green, PW6 and PY129. Hmm, that's, that's pretty, that would be a really useful mixer too. All right, so I think that's all the colors in this first set. Let me just see if there's uh, no other information on the box. And I don't have like a brochure or anything with it, which is kind of strange. Usually Paul Rubens has, um, will offer brochures and have information on the box. So it could just be that I have um, uh, an early an early version, but I do know they're, they're for sale now. Did I lose? I don't think I lost anything. I don't think this was in another packaging. Maybe it, did it have plastic? Maybe it had plastic on it and I took the plastic off. I don't know. Honestly, I've had this in the studio for a few weeks. So it's been a, it's been a busy summer. I've been doing World of Watercolor Month, so I haven't had a chance to get to um, all of that. I wonder if I should... <sighs> Maybe we should swatch those out. I'm just worried about getting them mixed up, but I'd like to keep them all together. And I don't know... We've got two sets here. Well, you know what? Uh, I can link to the sets and then you'll be able to see what's in each set. I think that makes more sense. I can't believe they didn't put like a brochure in here. That's weird for them. They usually do. And these little ends are falling out everywhere. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put them all in one box because that makes more sense to me. And should I swatch them? You know what? Okay, let's just swatch those first. We'll call that set one. I don't know if there's a white and black in either of these because we're just... This is going to be first impressions. 
then I'm going to do a painting with it and then we'll come back and uh, and that's how I'm going to do it that's how it's going to go so I'm going to start off with oh they're so creamy I think maybe I'll just do like kind of a rainbow swatch of the set one. Oh wow, these are these do feel really nice. Apologies for any background noise. It's summer, like I previously stated. I'm working, I've got sand grain paper here. I just want to get these. Oh, this one's a pretty one. I want to see that one. Ooh, that's nice. Kind of want to blend back into this one. Greens are generally a little bit freaky, especially that bright green. Like this one's much creamier, and but the uh, the bright ones tend to be a little bit difficult. I want to put these in order now. Nothing like a good rainbow order. I love Paul Rubin's packaging, but there's there's no way I'm going to keep this from getting pastel smudges all over it, and that's just how it's going to be, and that's fine. Oh, can we? I wonder if I can fold this back so I have it kind of leaning. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that. Even if it's not meant to do that, I'm going to figure out a way to do that because I think having that leaning back or leaning forward a little bit is going to be... How can I do that? That's, I think that's what I what I wanted to do. If I can have these this lean forward like that, that's going to be a great way to store these. All right, next we'll have this kind of blue or green. That feels pretty good, honestly. These pastels. Oh, look at that ultramarine. What do they call this? Cobalt blue. Oh, that's a pretty violet. I'm not like, um, and then we've got this oddball here, this this raw sienna. That does look like a raw sienna. Um, okay, so this is what we have so far in the first set. Definitely want to figure out how I can make this lean. I might have to combine both of the boxes, but I'm going to try to make that lean because I think that would be really nice if it did that. All right, next set. Next set, here we go. Should we swatch as we go? Maybe put them in order. Oh my gosh, they're just falling out. Okay, so the tubes, I'm going to say they'll be good for long-term storage, but they, I think they're great for shipping. It does make for a lot of packaging, but I think that because it's something you can reuse, I'm not mad at it. I think if they sold it without this packaging, you'd have a smushy, mushy mess on your hands, and you don't want that, not when you're paying for supplies. And as I recall, these were not super inexpensive. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to look up the price on those right now. I'll be right back. So each set of these, um, there's 12 colors in each set and they are $55.98 each. So they're not cheap. Um, they're, you know, obviously cheaper than Sennelier. I'll have to look up the Sennelier jumbos to compare. And they're, not that much cheaper than like the Shiva paint sticks, which are like an actual oil paint and a stick. And so the difference between an oil pastel, which I believe these are, these feel more like an oil pastel and, the, and an oil paint stick is that the oil paint stick will actually dry, it has a drying oil in it. So your oil pastels have a non-drying oil, like a mineral oil or a sap, something that doesn't, that doesn't dry. Um, I don't know what their oil exactly is, but it's probably like a mineral oil, kind of like baby oil, you know, it's min mineral oil based versus a oil paint stick, which would have linseed oil as the oil, which would dry. And um, they both have waxes in them. So that would just basically, is the oil drying or non-drying? And um, when you have an oil paint stick, it'll have a skim on it that you'll have to kind of peel off and then you'll have the like the oil paintiness underneath and it will dry and these won't dry. So um, just something to consider if you are thinking about purchasing this product. Um, like I said, $55.98. They do have a coupon on it on Amazon right now, but that, you know, make sure it's what you want. Make sure it's, it's, you want a jumbo oil pastel, that it's not a paint stick you're after. Cause that's, that's a little, it's a little misleading. I don't think they're intentionally trying to mislead because when they, when they reached out to me 
to review these, they they said the jumbo oil pastels, that's what they called them. So I don't think they're trying to mislead. I just think it might be a situation where that's just the nomenclature they're using, you know? That's or for some reason they did maybe they did they, something was lost in translation because they are a Chinese company. And I do like the Haya pastels, which is what these feel like to me. And the packaging looks like and they're very similar to the Sennelier oil pastels, so just to kind of get a little bit of a, of a reference. So this is a second set. Oh, these are all... Yeah, I think I want to... I think I want to make a storage thing for these because if they're not in a way that I can easily use them, I'm not going to be using them. It's just I know myself and I know I need... I need to make things easy. This color looks so much like that other color. Oh, you know, we weren't looking at the pigment information. Let's see, this one is PG36, PW3, PW4. Uh, this one was PY35, PG7. Boy, a lot of PY35. That's surprising. It's making me wonder if it might be a typo or if it if it is actually PY35. This one... PY35, there we go, another cadmium yellow. This one, PY35, another cadmium yellow. This thing is rife with cadmium yellows, which on one hand, great for light fastness. On the other hand, um, bad for toxicity. PO73, is PO73 a cadmium orange? Or no, PO20 is a cadmium orange. And I think we actually saw that. And didn't we see PO20? PO20 right here. Hmm. That's, that's kind of interesting. I'm not, I'm not PR108. That's cadmium red. What are they calling it? Red light. Uh, this one is permanent intense red PR122. Really? PR122? I always think of that as more of a um, cooler red. Hmm. The mystery that is Paul Rubens. But yeah, so definitely not for kids. There's no, the other thing that's kind of concerning, and it might just be because I had I had a, an early version of it, um, is that I don't, and maybe I took the plastic off. Maybe I probably took the plastic off and maybe that information was there. But um, the fact that there is no toxicity warnings, so there should be an AP label if it's got cadmium in it, even though I think you're unlikely to absorb it through your skin and you're not going to be spray applying this so maybe it doesn't need it. Oh my goodness, that's pretty. Mix those two together. That's pretty. Hmm. That's very green base. This is uh, Azure Blue, which is uh, Thalo Blue plus White, so BB15 colon 3. Then we've got uh, Pale Blue, PB29 plus PW4, so an ultramarine. We've got purple PW4, PR122. See, this is what I think of when I think of PR122. This color here, which as you can see, is very cool, very magenta-like. And they, and what was this one had PR122 it said? No, must have been the other one. That's the cadmium. And this one right here, see how warm that is? It does not look like a PR122 to me, but could just be the way they process the chemical, I suppose. And I could be, I could be wrong, believe it or not. And then we've got black, uh, PBK8, PBK9, and PBK7. That's interesting. I'll have to compare it to the old black and white, and we'll see what if they, anything's changed. And then our white is PW6, which is a nice opaque, opaque white. So that's what you would get for $112, basically. Um, and and you know, I'm not... I will do some artwork with it. We will see. So let's see if the packaging looks the same, PW6. They've changed the color on the wrapper, but it seems to be the same pigment and the same size. Let's see how it swatches. Looks the same to me. And 001 is the number. Zero zero number zero zero one is a number, just different, just a little bit different color of a of a label. I think I might leave that one wrapped up just because I don't need 
I don't need two open. And then we'll just take a look at the old black. And that's got uh, PBK 8, 9, and 7. So same pigment number. How does the wrapper look? Uh, the new wrapper is brighter. I don't know if it's just because this one has had oil. It feels like the old wax, the old wrapper is a little more wax papery and this new one's a little bit more normal papery and the new one has the pull tabs on and the old one doesn't so looks like they upgraded the wrapper a little bit which is which is good. I'll swatch that out and see. Eh, seems about the same to me. All right let's uh let's put this back in there and do some artwork. Do some artwork with these two sets and see how they perform. I'm going to clean up my space a little bit and get some paper ready and we'll see you right back here. I've taped down some paper so I can do an artwork. I did a little calculation so based on like the 48 set of the Hyatt Oil pastels that would work out to the equivalent of one like small pastel being about 75 cents to if you broke this down to um, how much pastel you're getting a pastel's worth here would be like 66 cents so per like gram of pastel this is a little bit better of a deal than if you're considering the 48 set but you've got a limited amount of color um, just for just for information now I did I scored the I actually sliced through half of the cardboard here and made my and made myself a little a little stand so I actually kind of pulled that off I scored the lid here so I could fold it back on itself and have it be underneath like that so I could have this raised. I think I'm going to find some way to cut these in half and take like 12 of these and cut them in half so I have 24 things and glue them to the bottom of the box so I can kind of keep them separate when I put them away so they won't like smudge onto each other. Um, but I think uh, this is going to work out really well as far as keeping my pastels handy while I'm working. And I'm going to try to do the painting from Food Paint, Paint Challenge. I taped down some of this sand grain paper onto my, um, my backer board. And we are just going to, we're going to hope for the best, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with, do I want to start off with black? Ooh, see, this is where... Uh, no, I don't want to start off with black. I'm just kind of, I don't know. Let's just, let's just see what happens here. So I'm just going to start filling in with this blue color. It's very easy to fill a background in. That's nice. You're probably not going to be the most practical way to, um, to approach a painting like this. Look how much it's wearing down though. I feel like I already, already want to take off. The first, that came off really easy. Oh, I like that because usually I'm like digging and picking and my nails are getting all gross and stuff, but that came off really good, so that's nice. I'm just going to do like a thin coat and then I'm going to blend it out because I don't want to get too much on this first coat, especially with these are so soft. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at how much that... Um, I'm grab my blending tools here. Lose a little finger caught. Especially since I know some of these have cadmium in them. Um, I think I'll just try to be a little bit mindful of that. Um, I think all their Haya oil pastels have pigment information. I'm not sure about their other oil pastels. I think they do. Um, on the pastels themselves, if not on Amazon or in their brochure, maybe. But I am a little concerned. I'll have to ask. Gosh, I wish I didn't. I don't know if I. I probably did take plastic off them. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really concerned about the safety information labeling. Uh, because cadmium is something people want to be aware of. Oh, look at that. Look how well that blended out. And I didn't put too much down because I didn't want to have it too... 
two coated now let's see I want to do a little tabletop so I think what I'm going to do is just set a piece of tape down and make a little uh, a little like table ledge I might just use white I have plenty of white so I'll go about a third of the way up from the bottom that will look nice and plus it looks pretty much like what our reference photo looks like should I use a t-square maybe I should let me just double check with a t-square anyway I don't want to get my t-square covered with pastel but that looks pretty good to me. Okay, and now I think I'll just use white. I do have other things I'm going to need to layer on top, though. Uh, maybe I'll use this yellow. This cadmium yellow. Which should be pretty opaque, though, because it's a cadmium color. And it could be mislabeled. I don't know. I'm going to mix my colors here. Um, definitely need to uh, wipe that off on something, like paper towel probably. Usually don't like to use these really soft ones for my first layers. What the hell? Let's use it here. I'll just wipe it off there and then I can dip into it for more colors if I need it. And then that will be the end of this board probably. Probably not a really wise situation, but use it as a palette anyway. I might regret putting the white in this early because it might make it difficult for me to sketch on my focal point, which is a box of blackberries. And I could use some solvent, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea, and smooth this out a bit, but let's just see what the pastels will do on their own. All right. Got a nice crisp line. I'm just going to take off this finger caught here. Another, another reason not to eat or drink in your studio because you wouldn't want to ingest. I mean, I think cadmium particles are coated for safety, but I don't know. I, I treat everything like it's pretty toxic. Now I am going to do a little sketching on with a color pencil just because I need a little bit of detail. And I'm not going to fret. This is not going to be a masterpiece. I'm just going to have fun with it. So we've got a box of raspberries. This would be a nice way to make scratch, like a scratch art. But then again, depending on the color you're using, I would make sure you're not using it for kids, I guess. You know, I mean, it's... That's a thing, you've got to be so careful. That's very satisfying. <laughs> uh, a little lip. Plus, it's a transparent little box of raspberries, so it's kind of, or blackberries, so I like that I can kind of depict it. Like that. Ah, a little, little glob. Oh well. Okay, now we'll do get the back. This will, uh. Oh, you know what? I've got to make sure I have this big enough. I wish I had my mall stick handy. Oh my word, I wish I had to draw a parallelogram. Good lord! <laughs> should be higher. We're going to make it so. Uh, 
I like to use Prismacolor pencils when I'm doing uh, a color pencil over oil pastel. I just find they have a little bit of some more sticking power. I also think I might scrape up some of the color in the center with a palette knife. Where I'm going to put my raspberries. Alright, look at that too shabby. All right, should we just go right in with the raspberries, blackberries, blackberries. Let's go in with, I'm going to actually sketch them in black. Because I have a feeling that I might have a hard time getting them as dark as I need them to be. Got Blue's Clues. <laughs> it looks like something, looks like Blue's Clues. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Mm, let's do some of this beautiful magenta color. This is very fun though. I'm not gonna lie. Very enjoyable. I might keep this pretty impressionistic, honestly. Why not? Everything doesn't have to be all rendered. Okay, I definitely need to have a rag to wipe these off. Otherwise, they're gonna get so gross. Da, 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 I think I'll save that one for last. Let's go into this more permaviolet color here. And to be honest, like my personal preference, I would rather have a, for myself, as long as I know about it, I'd rather have a light, fast, and toxic product. And by that, I mean it's it's containing cadmium or cobalt and obviously I can handle it properly so I don't get sick. Obviously you don't want to get sick from your art, but I would rather have a product that's light fast that uses cadmium or cobalt than have something that's going to fade and be non-toxic because I'm in a season of life where I don't have little kids running around and I can I can uh I can manage that, you know. Obviously not the same for everyone, but um and that's just kind of where I'm at. Now I want to get the shadows on the table and I just kind of want to drag out the color here. I like to use these little silicone tipped nail tools and color shapers for um, for blending. I'm just pulling out some of the color right from the berries because I know it's gonna kind of make sense. I think maybe it's too much purple. Mm, I feel like it needs a little more blue and a little more black, maybe. Transparent shadows are so fun. Dun 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 da da dun 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 da da. When you're young, you're just like, woohoo, male. And as you get older, you're like, ugh. 
nothing good's coming in the mailbox. <laughs> I'm just smearing around some of the color on my on the stick here. Because of how gooey these pastels are, um, I'm going to try to use the uh, just what's on my stick as much as possible, especially on these clear areas. I'll put white highlights in later, obviously, but if I can get um, I'm just going to try to lightly just sketch that in there. If I can get a bunch of the just reflections and colors and stuff just sculpted in there, just hinted at, I feel like it's going to look a lot more natural. A lot of times it's what you don't paint. as much as what you do paint. Hope that makes sense. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. All right. And I'm just gonna kind of, oh, actually, you know what? I could go in with a color pencil and sketch a bit. Maybe I'll do that. Because on the blackberries, you have all, and I feel like I have more blackberries in there than there is on the on the reference. We can make them nice and big and juicy. We all like a big juicy blackberry, don't we? Except they're very seedy. My my mother has huge um, blackberry bushes in her garden and then because uh, they live kind of in this old this family farmland um, huge blackberry bushes that are just kind of like wild out in the, on the edge of their woods. I brought some home last year and I thought I'm going to make some jam. I was up feeling very, uh, very industrious. And so I went to make some jam and I guess I boiled it too long because it was like in the jar, it was like a solid hard candy mass. It did, uh, it was, there was no spreading of that jam. Well, this one right here is kind of like you're seeing it from the underside. So sadly, kind of wasted those blackberries. I hate that. I hate to waste food, but that happens sometimes. I mean, you gotta learn, right? I mean, sometimes we waste things when we're learning. We waste food when we're learning to cook. We waste our supplies when we're learning to paint, but it's not really a waste because otherwise, how would you know how to do it? The only way to learn is to do it, especially when we teach ourselves things. And, you know, we have you where we have a situation where we have access to learning things, right? Sometimes it works out great. Other times, you know, it's a little trial and error. But don't be hard on yourself if you waste something when you're learning because the next time you do it, it's going to be great. Or you may even, not it might not come out the way you wanted it, but it might come out better or it might, um, it might be something totally new. Maybe a totally different thing. You might be trying to make jam, but you end up making some delicious tart. Actually, I'm liking how this is coming out. This is not too shabby. I don't I don't think this is the best use for these pastels, like to work on something small like this. I think you'd be much better off doing, um, I'm gonna turn this upside down because I can't, uh, I don't wanna set my hand in the, in the fray there. Um, I think you'd be much better off, like maybe do the background. Well, actually the way I like to work with pastels is I prefer to start with a harder pastel And then work with um, 
with the softer ones as I go. But I think these larger pastels are gonna make more sense if you work really large, not something small like a, like a sheet of paper like this. If you're working on like a big, a big canvas or something, I think that that would make a lot more sense. And I mean, I guess ounce for ounce, they are a little bit cheaper, but you are limited in colors with this. So I re I don't know. I really like the, uh, the Haya pastels, I like the smaller ones, but I, I like these two. I also like to work really directly and, and whatnot, but we'll see how this comes out. This might actually probably can paint a little faster this way just because, uh, I'm scraping some of that out just because I can put stuff down so much quicker and I can't fuss with as much detail. Should probably just get a smaller scrapey tool for that, but oh you know what I could I probably could have used a pan pastel soft tool without this glove on it. Oh you know what I got one right there. Let's do that. Brilliant idea I had. Let's grab this little guy. Mm, it's not as scrapey though. Oh, well, maybe it is. All right, let's uh, draw that little that little center part in. Um, I like that there's a mixed. I like having both of the sets for the mixture. I don't know if I would personally spend that much for it though. That's a thing. That seems kind of high for Paul, for Paul Rubens. I'm trying to think. I think. I'm thinking the Sinelli ones, the jumbo ones, go for like $20 a piece though, so they are expensive. It is a lot of product. Uh, I'm probably just a stingy person. I had a little bit of this white. Oh yeah, that's probably cadmium yellow too. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. It's just a good rule of thumb anyway, not to eat, drink, or smoke in your studio, so you're not ingesting your stuff. Whenever I say that, people are like, well, if people are going to smoke, then blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make any sort of morality calls on anybody. Do what you do. It's none of my business. Um, let's try to make our studios as safe as we can, though. So I will be washing my hands when I, well, I'd have to wash them anyways because I get so messy. So what I'm doing here is there's like, um, you can find this reference photo on Instagram at the food paint challenge. Um, what I'm doing is basically kind of like sketching in the little, like indents, I guess, or creases, whatever, like little folds in the plastic, just trying to get little bits of that detail. And let's see, we've got four. I've got to flip this around again. I'm gonna set my arm right in that. So we got four. We've got this little kind of groove. And then we've got the little holes where the air can go, right? So I'm trying to try to balance them out a little bit. Gosh. I'm not great at equally balancing things. Is that too far down? Oh, sure, I think I made that too far down. Yes, it's too far down. That's all right, we can smush it out. Whoa, 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 it's magic to smush out the all pastel mistakes. You gotta believe. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am just hot mess today. Oh, my gosh. So yesterday, I was like, oh, I got a lot to do. Got a lot to do. 
And I don't know why on days where I have a lot to do, I do nothing. It was a nice day out and I was thinking, well, I'm going to have a lot of nice days. Maybe I should just hang out on the porch and read. Ugh. Could not get out of my own way yesterday. Oh, shoot. Look at that. I just broke the lead on that. Oh, that's all right. Mm, I also would like to tidy that up a bit. Let me see. Like I said, I'm not going to be all like super worried about having anything perfect here. Uh, I think she's rough. She's real rough, but um, I'm just going to lean in, lean into it. Uh, yeah, so see, here's where it's going to be less practical because if I'm doing details with this chunker, it is going to be very difficult to stay in the lines, to do any of the things I need to do, I think. Then again, if I embrace the just messy um, vibe of it, well, it might look cool. You know, it might actually look kind of cool. I think this would be much better if I went ahead and, and used some of the other pastels, but also I'm just kind of like, ooh, how far can I can I go with with just these? gonna have to darken in these holes and get some more of that window, uh, not the window, the background color in there. Not bad, really. Not bad for how much time we put into this, I don't think. So just take some of this color. Ooh, that doesn't want to apply very well. I think I need one of my little tools here. I want to get the grain out of this. Actually, this is really fun. I am enjoying these uh, this painterly way of working. I don't know, I might need to go in with some smaller oil pastels or pencils before I'm done, but I am enjoying this, to be honest. And for someone who's been doing water, World Watercolor Month for the last month, it ended a few days ago, uh, I had been feeling kind of burnt out. And this might just be the tonic I need. You know, I think it might be. I'm really enjoying this. I think when I get some white highlights on, highlights on this, it's going to look pretty cool, honestly. And this is really fun. It's really fun to do. I do 
barring for the lid it was not great but uh, it's fine I'm not unhappy with it I mean it's I think I think it'll be fine when I'm all it's all said and done Especially when I get white highlights on. I think it will have to go in with something smaller for the white highlights. It's coming. I know it does look a little rough. Especially that, that lid looks a little rough. But let me see if I can do the label. Because it's backwards. Oh, I might be able to do it with this pencil. Deoxazine purple hue. It's called so I gotta do the word fresh backwards. Oh boy. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be harder than <laughs> I'm gonna make a little line to stay within. I'm surprised at how well that's um surprised at how well that one's hold that one's sticking that's good oh my god wouldn't it be funny if this is like my best penmanship ever and I'm doing it upside down on a greasy oil pastel background with color pencil <laughs> probably would be because it's like I'm drawing my letters and not trying to like not trying to make fancy nice letters I think we all have these self-limiting beliefs sometimes where it's like, I can't do this thing. And then, you know, tell yourself either you can or you can't. Either way, you're going to be right. chance I'll be able to do the word always backwards. Boy, that's a, that is a big ask. That's a big ask. And there's some words in there, but they're too small to read. Okay, maybe I can do the always. Ooh. Let's start in the middle. Uh, let's see, middle over here, we have a W. too bad. I mean, we're no we're not going to be winning some topography awards or anything, but you know, I, th I don't think it's that bad. I'm going to tighten up that sticker a bit on the edge. Kind of like the little bits of uh Actually, yeah, maybe I'll use this pencil to get a little bit of my, uh, a little bit of my definition back here. Might as well. I feel like a kid playing with crayons and mud pies all at the same time. See, this is where it's more difficult than watercolor. I can't just lay my hand down or I'm going to be a greasy mess. I 
I'm here doing this now and I'm thinking, okay, how can I keep this more symmetrical with, with what I've already got? Hopefully I'm not sticking my head in the way. I always I always worry about that because if I'm not recording and um I tend to wanna like get straight over my work. Um I wonder, I'm gonna sharpen this so if you've had headphones in, this is gonna get loud. <laughs> And if this doesn't work, I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna grab a smaller oil pastel because uh yeah, I'm just gonna snap it here. But I do like the detail. I could use like a little oil-based paint pen as well. It's kind of rough on the paint pens, I gotta be honest. I like to draw clear things. I don't know why I find it so fun. I'm getting there. We're kind of getting there. It's not like my lines aren't as sure as I would like them to be. They're so wibbly wobbly. I find skipping around helps too, like if I'm getting stuck somewhere, it's like, ah, oh, it's not coming out the way I want. If I skip around. It's a little bit nicer for me to work. thing I like about the food paint challenge is that you know this you gotta it's not a daily challenge for one thing so it's not overwhelming but you've got another chance like every week to do something different and if it doesn't come out you know big whoop right big whoop de do do another chance we all have our moments of goodness and badness in our art and it's fine this is such an unusual look. I like it though. How about something pink? Oh man. Maybe I can just very gently. Ah, that's not gonna show up anyway. Alright, so let's go into our I don't know. Use a smaller pastel. I have more color options. Maybe I will. You know, let me grab my purple drawer of pastels. Got a variety. I've got a lot of pastels. <clears throat> Actually, that's my pink purple drawer. I have more purpley. I got more purpley ones. Oh, yeah, that doesn't. Actually, this is, um. Uh, you know. Maybe I want to use. a small palette knife. Ooh, that might work. Let me go find one. Actually, maybe that one would work. Yeah, it does. Hmm. 
All right, let's make a little palette here. Now this is this was just a back of a pad of paper that I just kept because sometimes it's handy to have these just to to use for different different um, you know, sticking your paper down different times and I can discard that. Again, my apologies for the noise. I really have no control over it in the summer. One of these days, though, I will have the upstairs addition with absolutely no water pump, furnace noises, anything like that. But that's going to be a couple years away because it'll be after the kids are completely done with college. For now, I am a cellar dweller. A cellar dweller. I could bring some structure to these guys. This is really, really losing the structure here. Yeah, maybe I'll do a little bit of figuring out where I want things to be. And then I can just hit it with some highlights. This is thick like paint, you know, when you when you do that, it's very easy to get a bunch of color down. And when I put the white down, I think that's probably going to be the last that I'll want to add to it. So I'm just making sure I have everything else covered the way I want it to. Ooh, I don't know if I like this. Mm. I think I'm overdoing it. Yeah, I think this is going to be more uh, a supply for when you um, when you just kind of want to put in larger areas and then use it with other things. I don't think it's a kind of all-in-one supply. I think it's better in conjunction. Just because of the size and how um, cumbersome that's what I think anyway it's fun though I mean I, I like them I like them. I just don't think they're as practical as like their typical oil pastels unless you go through these colors a lot where you work really large. 
And if you're working really large, you probably are using oil paint. Getting that kind of glare on the box. I do like how painterly you can get with these, but I mean, I could do that with paint, so I don't know. I mean, the nice thing about the pa oil pastels is they don't dry on you, so you can keep working with them until you're done, and then put some varnish on it, put some fixative or varnish. I've had really good luck using um, the Sennelier varnish and then uh, going over it with Minwax Polycrylic. Especially if I use the the um, the matte polycrylic because it does end up giving you that kind of like waxy encaustic look. I feel like this lip should be down a little bit further. I always make such a mess when I'm using this and I have to really scrub down my table afterwards to get all the greasy residue off of it. Well, you know, I'm not I'm not unhappy with that, to be honest. Um, I think I'll let it sit and then maybe do some like more to it, but and let it let it firm up a bit because you can always add a little bit more once it firms up. But overall, I like the product. I have a little bit of safety concerns with the labeling. Um, I feel like it should have something stamped on the box itself, uh, like an AP um, toxicity seal, like the CL. I feel like it should have a CL label on it because of the cadmium. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a little potential wor potentially worrisome, but I'll have to go, you know, I'll have to see what the new packaging looks like to make sure, you know, it's not just something that I've received that's not what other people are going to get. They'll get the labeling, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I, I like them. I like them. They're fun to use. <clears throat> and I'll enjoy using them. I'm going to make myself a little kit, like a little storage thing for them so that they're a little bit more useful and they maybe are held not, so they're not like right now they're all just kind of stacked on top of each other. I'd want to spread it out a little bit <clears throat> so that, um, you know, they're not going to smudge up against each other. But in conjunction with other oil pastels, I think they'd be a really nice addition. So you can look at the written description in the video description. And all pros and cons all laid out, and that way it might be a little bit easier to um, to kind of see what I think. Like get my or my thoughts organized. I might add a little regular oil pastel to this too. I'm gonna let it firm up though a little bit because it is really smushy right now. But uh, they're fun to use. They're pretty straightforward. I feel like the quality is pretty good. And yeah, but something you're in the market for. <clears throat> if the price seems good to you, I think the price is all right. It's expensive for Paul Rubens, but it's a lot of product as well. So I don't know. It's I guess it doesn't seem that outrageous. I think I'll go in with a black pencil too. But I'm gonna let this firm up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, and yeah, we'll we'll come back and and wrap things up in a in a bit. I went and grabbed some other Paul Rubens pastels I had. Um, and because I have more colors, I have more colors in the smaller sizes, and I'm just going to throw in some other colors. Um, so this one's pretty close to the color I mixed for the, um, the ground there, and I want to get some of those Uh, reflections in here and stuff because this is kind of like a clamshell opening and so it's it's being having a lot of the colors reflected from the tabletop so I wanted to get that kind of represented Might be a little much, but maybe not. Maybe it's all right. I 
I really kind of got lost in those little bumps here at the in the package. I think I got lost a little bit with those, but I also think I can bring them back. I also grabbed a small Haya. I, these do feel, to me, the um, these new jumbo pencil uh, pastels do feel like the Haya pastels. These ones like here that are very, uh, which I honestly think are kind of um, dupes of the Sennelier pastels. They really feel a lot like those, the uh, Sennelier oil pastels. Which is great because I really like those pastels, so I mean I'm happy for that. Uh, I kind of had wished they were actual oil paint sticks, and there are some reviewers on Amazon that say they are, but to me they don't feel like um, oil sticks. They feel like oil pastels because, like I said before at the beginning of the video, oil sticks would have. Um, they would have a skin on them. I mean, size-wise, yeah, they kind of look like them, but uh, they don't feel like them. Not like any oil stick I've used. And I, well, I've used Windsor Newton and Shiva. It's getting really painterly, really thick. I'm kind of really liking it, though. Um, I've just like, you know, anything, you can feel like you overdo it. This is a small Haya oil pastel. Just want to catch those brighter highlights. I think I've kind of overworked it a little bit, to be honest. But I'm also kind of uh, reeling from World Watercolor Month, so... I'm definitely out of practice on a lot of the other mediums. Stop messing with that and get a black pencil because you are just going to fuss with that until it is unworkable. That's not even black. There we go. I don't want to do that. As it is, I don't have a really good... didn't really make a good plan when I was doing... I was doing my little cutouts here in the bottom of the the, G, the uh, package, so that's a little bit unfortunate. And then I feel like I do need a little bit more structure, at least on a few of these. A few of these guys because I don't know, I think I went a little overboard with the white, to be honest. I was just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And that was really not wise. I should have paid a little bit, especially you're getting towards the end, I should have taken a break and then been like, okay, I'm gonna come back. Instead of just charging forward and um, making a mess. So let's throw some purple. This is the Haya. Pastel, smaller one. I'm really running out of tooth here on the paper. Toning down some of those overly done white highlights. These smaller pastels, do they have the tears? I don't think they do. Oh, they must have perforations because look how easy that teared. Um, 
I think the smaller ones, I mean, you'll get more colors for your buck, but you get more, um, you get more actual product with the bigger ones. All right. Do I want to leave that like this? I'm kind of thinking I probably should. Pretty darn close. I mean, like, this is slippery feeling. Like, if I go and try to put any details in it, I can feel like it's kind of hard to control the pencil because it is very slippery. I'm just seeing if there's any little crisp details I can put in there. I think I should probably just leave it, honestly. All right, time for the best part. Time to take the tape off and see what it looks like. It's been kind of a weird review. Okay, so I did email Paul Rubens. So I went to their official website, which was kind of hard to find. I am getting really fed up with this, our search engines anyway. I was able to find their official website, which actually, to be fair, is printed on the pastels themselves. And this product is not on their official website currently. Um, at least I couldn't find it anyway. And so then I looked at the Amazon listing and the Amazon listing said that these are um, safe and environmentally friendly. And I'm like, I don't know if you can call something that's using cadmiums as environmentally friendly or safe. So that made me a little bit nervous. It made me a little bit kind of It kind of made me feel like maybe I shouldn't be, I, I, I don't know, I should be really careful about promoting this product because if it, if the pigment information is true and says cadmiums in it, then I don't consider that. Maybe it was like the cadmium was mined in the most perfect conditions, but still, a lot of people don't know what PY35 and PR108 is. They don't know that's cadmium and it. There was just no labeling on the package unless I throw away some cellophane, which I also asked about that. So I am going to put any information I find in the video description. Honestly, I think that for products to be sold in the United States, they're supposed to have the, um, they're supposed to have uh, ASTM labeling on it and that wasn't it wasn't on there there's a CE label on the, the stick themselves but you'd have to buy the product to see that you know you can't and nothing is on the um, is on the listing on Amazon so I don't know I'm I think the products good I'm just a little concerned of the labeling and I'm sure things I've let things slide in the past because I just didn't realize it but I'm becoming a lot more conscious of that now. Um, sometimes when you see your whiteboard, you can make some make some adjustments that you that needs to be made. Uh, so anyway, I mean, quality wise, I like them. I mean, they're a little expensive, but comparatively, I was looking at the Blick website for Sennelier. If you buy three or more of the Sennelier jumbo sticks, they're eleven dollars and something, or they're like fifteen if you're only buying one, which I would imagine you probably buy a couple anyway. So, I mean, they, they are, they're about twice, they're about half as expensive per stick, but they don't have open stock. So, you know, they do have pigment information. So that's nice. As long as it's accurate, it's, you know, it's just something, you know, you got to decide if that's for you or not, but I think this came out pretty cute. I'm going to share it as part of the food paint challenge. Um, oh, I can show you the comp the comparison between the full size stick and the original stick here just for your seven times more in this versus this is what they say. Or do they mean seven times more than this? This is their other pastel, which is a little bit bigger. Um, but these are the higher ones. So I, su I assume they mean seven times more than this. So you're getting a lot of product. Um, I think the quality is good. They're fun to use. This came together fairly quickly, I think. And I was concerned with how big these were, if I was going to be able to control them at all. You will need to wipe down the sticks when you're done. Uh, you can alter the box for storage. And yeah, I like them. But do check the video description for all the pros and cons. And also if I hear back from Paul Rubens and what they say about their uh, the cadmium situation and all of that. Because I do want to make sure people are aware if they're learning about a product from one of my reviews. I want to make sure they're aware of... Uh, 
of everything that they could be potentially getting into. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!